So um, I welcome you all for the second day of uh, the Research Scholars Colloquium. And um, today, before uh, we start the session, I would like to show you uh, some uh, interesting things. Uh, just a minute. Okay, sir, with your permission, I'm just sharing the precog link. So uh, uh, this, uh, I uh, like. Um, I feel that it is my uh, responsibility as one of the organizers of uh, the Research Scholars Colloquium that every uh, research scholar who is interested to work on um, like any application with respect to data analytics uh, uh, should be uh, knowing uh, the prominent research groups which are there uh, in India. So PreCog is one of such uh, research group. Uh, as you know, it has uh, been very clearly written over here, which uh, where the researchers would uh, study, analyze, and build different aspects of social systems okay and it also includes the security and uh, privacy aspects and this particular research group uh, is uh, present in uh, i um, at triple it uh, delhi and uh, so uh, this is just for your uh, reference uh, we have the, uh, the the web link is also given here uh, precog.triplited.edu.in so you might uh, interested people uh, please you can go there and uh, you can visit the link and see actually what is happening over here and I would also uh, like to show you like what and all uh, projects this uh, research group has been taking. Uh, like it is a lot of uh, things which res with respect to the uh, social network. And uh, so any uh, any uh, societal uh, application, which is the need of the R would have been taken over here and uh, very interesting. So as the line says over here, we are currently working on some exciting and challenging real world security and privacy applications. It never changes. Okay. Okay, so the, um, yeah, the, the problems that have been listed over here is always like that. And the most important thing over here is just go click the resources. You will have a lot and lots and lots of, uh, or I should say loads of data set. Um, there is very currently trending uh, data set, which is like openly available to us all. And in some cases, it is just very simple process for us to, uh, we need to just register and uh, like uh, almost instantly, we would be getting the data set. Uh, shared by this particular research group. So uh, now why do I introduce this uh, is we have our speaker today. Uh the uh, founder, I should say, and the head of uh, this particular research group, uh, Professor uh, Ponnurangam Kumaraguru, but uh, uh, not a lot of people would call him with such a long name. So he's very, uh, like, uh, he, he's very renowned uh, to be called as a PK. Okay, so, and he also likes to be uh, mentioned like that, I hope. And I'm just going to share his profile. Uh, because if you just see here, if I click this uh, CV, no, it will go pages after pages. Okay, so... Um, um, sir, uh, and his uh, present uh, designation and all those stuff, I'll just show you the PDF because he will generally ask questions from his uh, CV. So I'll help my uh, participants. Okay, so sir, if you, even if you're going to ask questions, the, it is going to be an open book question only. Now we are all in online mode. Okay, so uh, sir is a professor in uh, computer science uh, department and uh, uh, like uh, for I think a couple of years, he has been a very active uh, uh, students affairs uh, department dean at uh, Triple IT Delhi and uh, he uh, like um, uh, he has been uh, also a guest uh, professor and uh, at uh, Triple IT uh, Hyderabad and uh, now presently um, sir is uh, ACM India Council member uh, for uh, up to I think 2024 uh, he's going to be uh, as an um, ASEAN active member. And uh, so Sir is one of the uh, like uh, renowned people uh, who has launched this, uh, the PhD clinic, uh, wherein uh, I think Sir would uh, be explaining it much better than uh, what I do. Uh, and also we have a following session called as Ask Me Anything, uh, where again, uh, Sir would be hosting the session and uh, you will understand how it is going to uh, go. Okay. And uh, so this is just his profile. And if I have to read the profile, uh, a lot of uh, his time would be wasted. So uh, I'm just stopping it over here. And um, uh, sir, uh, the session is all yours, sir. 
Uh, thanks, Kartika. I think uh, that's a super impressive way of introducing, I guess. Yeah, I think you probably... No, sir, because talking. the, the problem is... <laughs> I thought that I would also make a slightly a different way, right? I'm actually wearing an SSN t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so actually the problem is because why I started with the precog is that uh, not a lot of people uh, down south, we know that such uh, um, uh, like groups are all uh, there okay so and uh, i hope a lot of uh, participants here are uh, from tamil nadu uh, sir is a pakka tamilian and uh, he is uh, sitting at uh, delhi okay so and the thing is uh, like uh, even if you are going to have like uh, how many of our participants are here uh, all of you send the mail to him uh, he will reply to all of you and uh, I'll say that, and there will be always a backup mail also. He will keep asking to you, see, you asked me this problem. Did you solve it? Did you solve it? So before you send a mail, uh, always remember that he will be behind you once your mail reaches his uh, inbox. Okay. So, sir. So, uh, I think thanks, Kartika, for that uh, the different way of introduction, I guess. I no, no, always that's, uh, this is what, this is my... Let's start, let's start. So I will share my screen. You yes, sir. Me to share my screen. Yes, yes, I have, sir. Okay. Um, so let me share my screen. So you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, participants also, can you can you type uh, plus one if you can see the screen in the chat? Okay, there's only two of you. More? Others are sleeping? There's also a way to... Uh, find out how many people are actually in the call and how many people are how many people are actually in the call who are also listening and they are not bots that Kartika has created to show that there are 29 people in the call but very few are actually human beings. Okay, there are few at least. Okay, so let's let's move on. So this is uh, I, I I have a lot of uh, content uh, uh, to sh to sh basically talk about. Uh, but let's see, I'll keep my chat also in front. Uh, so this is already said, so let's move on. Uh, so how many people, uh, how many of you will, will end up uh, talking about this talk on uh, social media, either now or after uh, the talk? If you can type S in the chat. Let's take you to a tweet. Uh, you'll probably do a, a Facebook, LinkedIn, Oh man, I meant yes, I meant oh yes, yeah, my good, good, good. Now that Tamil, now you have Tamil to read here. So Tamil lecture for example, here. Shanmuga Priya is also here. Hello, Shanmuga Priya. Yeah, yeah, um, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I asked about social media is the social media handles are at the bottom of the slide. Uh, if you want, please take a picture, a screenshot, whatever, uh, and uh, definitely tag me in the post. I think that's the. Uh, reason why I asked for uh, social media. Yeah, it'll be nice. Uh, it'll be nice to <clears throat> connect on uh, other platforms also. Okay. Okay. Uh, please use the uh, chat window because it's not online. I don't really get the uh, feedback that uh, otherwise uh, we'll get when we are in a room uh, and uh, giving a talk. Unfortunately, we'll not do that. Uh, so do a plus one smiley different. I mean, at different points, whatever smiley, crying face, uh, you, you appreciate something that I, uh, I'm saying, please, please react. Uh, classroom, at least we'll know heads are nodding, uh, nodding yes or a no, or at least smiley, or at least sometimes beach my claps, we, uh, claps also will show up. And none of that is possible here. So please uh, give me some feedback uh, in terms of at least the chat uh, text. I will use that to uh, understand. Uh, so can I get how many of your faculty, uh, if you can type F, uh, faculty meaning, let's say, uh, let, let's do slightly differently. How many of you are PhD students? Uh, type P for PhD students. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many of you have already have a doc PhD done? Please type T, D, D, D for uh, PhD doctor. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so some of you. Okay, so, uh, oh, okay, okay. So many of you. 
Okay, so, so if you have already done our PhD, so probably this will this will also help everybody, I guess. I don't think so. This is even though this is research scholars colloquium. I think the points that I'm going to discuss, I think uh, I, I, I myself uh, 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 sort of said did not do all of them at, at uh, some point in time before uh, finishing after PhD. But now I guess I do many of them. Um, so uh, so probably it is relevant to people who have finished uh, PhD also. Uh, but let but let me primarily focus on uh, the students. Uh, okay, so that's why I changed uh, uh, Sritar. That's why I changed faculty and PhD uh, because uh, uh, I think there are faculty who not have finished PhD. That's why I changed it to doctor. Okay, uh, so wide audience, we can see lots of uh, uh, people who have finished PhD, people who are doing PhD. Uh, so I'll try to keep it abstract. And that's why uh, Kartika and I decided that we'll actually do an AMA. And she has also curated some questions. Uh, I've, I've already seen the questions that uh, has been posed. Uh, but given that the audience uh, are here, uh, who may or may not have asked the questions uh, in the chat, we can actually let you ask the question and I can answer it uh, when we are doing it here only instead of taking only the questions from them. Okay. So what is scientific communication, right? Uh, scientific communication, you can actually think of it as a very different uh, uh, things that can happen in scientific communication, starting from even giving this talk, right? Uh, giving a presentation, writing a paper, uh, writing a blog, creating a, uh, so to say, a flyer out of your research, creating a YouTube channel, uh, creating a YouTube video out of your research, all of that could be considered as scientific uh, communication. So I'm, I have also, by, by uh, creating this content uh, uh, in the last couple of months, I've also realized that there's so many interesting ways to actually communicate uh, your, your research, right? Uh, depending on the time, given that uh, we have about an hour to cover, uh, depending on the time, I'll cover whatever hour, uh, how much ever is possible, and the slides are public. Uh, I'll give you the link to the slides and uh, you, you'll be able to access the slides uh, uh, yourself also if you need later. And uh, we are also recording it. We'll also put it somewhere on uh, YouTube and actually share the link also with everyone. Okay. Uh, picking a real world problem, uh, writing a blog, creating a public good. Uh, so uh, what Kartika said about uh, um, having data sets uh, on, on our website is actually creating a public good. I think. Uh, what is the power of creating public good is what we'll see. Uh, be active on social media. Uh, that's why I, I should probably next time when I do it, I should probably bold the research part. Uh, many of you may be active on Facebook. Uh, many of you may be active on Insta for that matter. Uh, but you may be active for uh, <clears throat> your, own, your own pictures, your own personal life. Uh, but I think if you start being active for research, yeah, the, the, the results are pretty uh, effective. And I'll show you research work done on uh, to show what is the effectiveness of being active on social media also. Uh, develop and be part of a community. Uh, I think as a PhD student, and probably even as a faculty, I guess, uh, the life of a PhD student generally is, is very, um, sort of say, siloed, very remote. Uh, you're mostly in a solitude state, or you're mostly in a small set of people who uh, the, the faculty, uh, students who are working with a single faculty, right? That's very small. Uh, I think one of, those, one of the key elements for being a, a PhD uh, student is actually being part of a community. Uh, we'll see some uh, efforts uh, made how to be part of a community, how can you build a community group, all of that. There are lots of tools. Uh, I'll show you some tools that are very effective, uh, some tools that you can actually explore. Presentation, if you end up uh, having time for presentation skills, I'll actually show you, otherwise I'll zip through all of them uh, for you. So here's what we'll define as uh, scientific communication. This is only for the purpose of this talk, uh, which is uh, scientific communications are called uh, referred. For now, we'll refer it as, because I think as researchers, our primary way of communicating our research is publications, journals, conferences, workshops, uh, probably books at some point in time, uh, probably opinion pieces at some point in time, but primarily all of you uh, will be involved in uh, point number one. All of us will be involved in point number one, right? Uh, so, so books, uh, critiques, uh, and uh, technical writing. Technical writing would be beyond just any of the things that I've written in the earlier points. Okay, 
So here is the first one, right? Uh, first one, I think uh, Kartika nicely uh, said about what I'm doing right now. Uh, but something that I did during my PhD life also has an effect of many of these uh, questions and many of these uh, communicational research. For example, even this one, I, I actually think that, uh, I mean, Kartika, when I mouse over, you're able to see my mouse also, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And I'm also seeing some people coming on video. I don't know why. Uh, so currently I see yeah, somebody on video. Um, uh, so uh, uh, is it uh, like, do we have to uh, be in video, sir? Is it necessary? No, no, no. I'm saying that I, I'm seeing somebody on video. Can we stop them being on video? Is what yeah, 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 sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, so I request the participants, please, uh, to uh, put your videos in off mode. Uh, so that we'll have a better uh, have a better view of the screen. Yeah. Okay. So here is here is one one communication that I think also right. Uh, so for example, I did my PhD thesis called Fish Guru. Uh, the title of my thesis was called uh, Fish Guru. Uh, we add we created actually a logo for uh, the thesis work also. This 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 so to say icon uh, image on the flyer uh, is actually representing uh, Fish Guru. Uh, why? Because I think uh, why one of the ways of actually expressing what you do uh, is by images. People people will actually remember the images more longer uh, than if I would have just said, oh, create a fish guru, right? Uh, so in this case, if you see a uh, fish guru with, uh, with the specs, all of this also helps to communicate the research. Okay. Um, um, Kartika, I'm still seeing people on video, Kartika. Can you, can you not stop all videos? Uh, uh, I think I can. I'm just trying, sir. I can only mute them. <laughs> uh, so uh, participants, it's an uh, humble request. If you could please uh, put your videos in, an, uh, in the off mode. Wait, I just actually move on. People who are on actually video, right? Sir? No. no, I see a lot more people who are actually on video also. Um, okay. I will let our that is. Okay. Um, yeah. That's fine. Um, so yeah, this is communication in terms of actually representing your work in, in an image, so to say, uh, but but let's let's look at uh, my uh, experience in doing this PhD work itself. One, it's a real world problem. You can see that it's about uh, pushing uh, semantic attacks, and uh, it is it is. So let's move on. Uh, so first first version of uh, uh, one of the companies that we ended up actually creating uh, while finishing uh, PhD uh, was this uh, company called Bombard. Uh, security technology. Uh, at some point in time, we ended up actually um, converting uh, uh, the research work, some parts of the research. So you, you can clearly see here Fish Guru being uh, one of the products of the company itself. Uh, again, the, uh, this is more focused for PhD students to start with, uh, which is that work on a problem which is uh, more real world, uh, work on a problem which is relevant to somebody outside you, outside your lab, uh, outside your faculty. Uh, pick research problems which are uh, sort of say you can you can connect to uh, um, I mean you should be able to say uh, to somebody very easily if you meet some older person on the sort of say bus or a train or an airport uh, or, or a person who does not do technology or a PhD they should be able to actually uh, understand what you're doing right that would help uh, do a PhD more effectively does that make sense? Can can somebody give me a response of uh, is is it making sense? Some reactions. Yes. No. Okay.
Okay, let's move on. So, so why, one thing that happened uh, uh, after uh, finishing PhD and having these, uh, having this company uh, at some point in time uh, was in after 10 years of the company, uh, sorry, after 10 years of creating the company, the company got actually acquired in 2018, uh, uh, in, in 2018. So the, the point here is it would help uh, so why, why one of the big reasons that I see why this could have happened is because the problems that we were working on as part of the PhD was relevant to sort of say larger society it was relevant to uh, people that are outside academia it was relevant to people uh, who are trying to solve the problem in a bigger way outside uh, academic institutes right so therefore I, I, I strongly believe and if, if, if you're interested uh, feel free to explore areas uh, which are which are um, sort of say real worldish uh, things that uh, people would relate to very easily well that's my first uh, usually that's my first punchline for uh, phd students uh, so has anybody written a blog before uh, kartika now you are able to see my video Hello. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're audible, but are you able to see my video? Uh, no, yes, sir. sir. Okay. No, because for I'm... me. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so has anybody written a blog? Not yet. Uh, not written any blog so far. Uh, okay. K Kavita says that she's written a blog. Okay. I don't know whether yes, sir, is for blog or uh, not uh, yet. But video three then kekrar. It is visible for me, Kartika. No problem. Oh, Shankar is saying no video. Kartika, you're able to see my video, right? Uh, yes, sir. You're, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm able to see, sir. Let's continue. No problem. Let's continue. So, so for people who have not written a blog, uh, for people who have uh, who want to think about what a blog is, so here is what I would suggest. So, for example, I'll show you one or two uh, things that have happened. Uh, in in what we have done itself. So here is a the the blog that is written on the left uh, is a blog which is the URL is here at the bottom. Don't worry. But for now, I'm what the point I'm trying to get across is that you can read a paper, right? I'm sure all of you are reading a, a paper uh, of uh, somebody for for your PhD work for your research work. You must be reading papers of others. What you should try and do is that you should write a summary of others' papers. Saying you you read this paper, this is what uh, you understood from the paper. This is a very interesting paper. All of that into a blog, and then you don't need to. Uh, there, there's a lot more uh, platforms now, right? I, I don't know whether uh, I mean WordPress is one very popular one, uh, but you should, you, there is there is also Medium right now, which is also very popular, uh, where where people are actually writing uh, blogs uh, about research work also. Right? Uh, so why should you write uh, blogs? As, as PhD students, as faculty, it's super important to write blogs uh, is because writing more blogs helps you to actually write better papers, right? Why? Because you, you just, you're just making your writing skills better, which is one of the biggest bottleneck of writing research papers, right? When you write research papers, you will get, I mean, reviewers, I'm sure if you've seen reviewers' uh, comments, you'll say that, oh, paper could have been written well. Uh, there are lots of uh, typos, there's lots of uh, English grammatical errors in papers. This, when you start doing um, blogs, a couple of things will happen. One, the blogs are public, right? You want to make the blogs public. People would see, read it. So probably there is more carefully that you'll write. Second, when you write this technical blogs, people will also, people who are coming to this blog will also know that uh, you are working in this area. For example, in our case, whatever blogs you go, go and see in our website, it will be projects that interest us, papers that interest us. Right? So therefore, it is not possible, um, therefore, it would be harder uh, for, for I mean, it will be easier for people actually to understand what is your area of work. Is that, is that making sense? So here is another big problem for a PhD life. If I ask you for PhD students uh, who are in the call, uh, uh, what did you do in the last, let's take one month? Right? 
generally let's say if if you are a, if you are if you are an average or an above average uh, phd student you would say that uh, look i did this abc i tried this experiment i collected this data i read this four three four papers this is what i have right it is interesting that um, um, uh, it is interesting that you if you start writing blogs interestingly you will also be able to say that look here is a blogs that i wrote for uh, three blogs that i wrote in last month about technical papers here are the here are the people who are reading about it here are the people who are actually talking about my blogs and things like that so it just it just helps you to also keep track of your work uh, and log in public space also right uh, there are there are even platforms that some of my uh, students use uh, where it is easy to maintain all this uh, publicly also it does not have to be a google doc that you maintain and make the google doc public uh you can you can actually easily put it on a wordpress you can easily put it on a um uh, medium and uh, and uh, make uh, make it more popular sometimes here is here is what happens sometimes the blogs sometimes the work that we do not all pieces of work can become a paper right think about it you you do let's say you you you're studying uh, community reduction in uh, social networks you're studying link prediction in social networks. you study phishing in social networks something like that or you study fake news in social media any problem you stay all the things that you do will never become a paper we cannot right some of the things that you pick will be very small you don't know what to do with it you you probably try it out leave it and then move on to the next one it it is very common so many i have uh, I've graduated many students right now, and I and I have many PhD students working with me. Extremely uh, visible that all pieces of work cannot end up being a research papers. Therefore, blogs also become more useful. Right? Where where you write small pieces of work, uh, put it there. It's okay. Right? Uh, uh, at least you get uh, uh, you get the documentation of that it is being done. Here is the reasons why. Uh, so if you look at it, there is even research to show that the uh, uh blogging helps increase your scholarly increase your research output right so so i'll show you later also social media all of that how it is helping but blogs writing blogs as i've already said writing blogs helps you to write better papers keep track of uh, the sort of say logs keep track of what you're doing instead of just saying that oh i did this four things but i don't have any particular uh, specific output and small pieces of work any any questions still here we can take i think kopal is asking a question but please feel free to ask questions in the chat i can go back and forth uh, uh to to uh, answer your questions does any similarity with the uh, own blog and thesis paper count in uh, plagiarism no not really right so uh, it may not be counted as a plagiarism that's why i uh, keep in mind i never said that you should write uh blogs about your current work that you're doing right now itself uh, into the blog i i started saying about research papers that you're reading as summaries and your criticism of the papers then the pieces of work that you write and which will not end up being uh, uh or which is not so to say quantifiably enough for it to become a paper is what will go as a blog is good uh, but but if it's your own piece of work it cannot be counted as a, a plagiarism any other questions for blogs i'm if you think that it makes sense now uh for for the arguments that i am making at least i'm sure there are many other arguments um uh, there is there is merit to this argument of writing blogs uh somebody is asking me meaning if 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 i if it's okay with all of you please uh, please post the questions publicly some of you are writing privately but i'll take the question uh but i will prefer questions being publicly uh and then i can actually answer them no 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 dr dr kanagavalli uh, i i i don't think so you should uh, you should worry about your own research meaning i mean you write blogs about anything right write blogs for example i will tell you what all blogs i'm writing right now which is uh, so i'll go live for you to show you what all blogs i write this this may not be a, a technical blog that i will recommend for phd students uh, but here 
Um, so this is, so for example, look at this. This is a blog. Again, it's, it's on our website. Uh, uh, this is, this is I meaning I, I, I get students to write blogs on when they graduate. It's a PhD student who, who defended his PhD thesis recently. That's his PhD thesis defense. Uh, but uh, but he, he, students are supposed to blog about their PhD life or master's life, undergrad life when they graduate, right? But I'll show you the, uh, for answering the question about what all, so for example, this one, this is a, uh, this is a book I recently read. It's called Tools of Titans, right? I write a blog about the book saying what all did I learn from the book? For example, uh, the quotes, that, uh, this book is primarily about quotes. Uh, what all are uh, impressive, uh, convincing, strong, profound uh, thoughts in the book, I actually document it and I actually make, make this blog public. Dr. Kanagoli, does that make sense? It does not have to be your research. Yeah. How can I paraphrase the technical documents without plagiarism? No, so uh, meaning you cannot, uh, so here's, here's what you should do, right? So if you post it like, for example, if you post it like this in, in course, that's not plagiarism, right? You are reading a paper, Ganesh. You, after reading a paper, you are saying that, look, uh, uh, Kumaraguru et al uh, wrote this paper on uh, phishing and social networks. We read the paper. Here is a summary of the paper. Paper talks about, took this data set, blah, blah, blah. Uh, did this analysis. Here is a blog. Here is a graph, which actually is, for example, I've, I've taken a picture of this book, right? This cannot be plagiarism because I'm actually crediting uh, the person who said it. I'm actually crediting to the author who wrote the book. Plagiarism is only if you don't credit it, right? Did that make sense, Ganesh? Yeah, okay, cool. Any other, any other questions? I, I, I'll continue uh, in my deck. All right, let's continue, hopefully. Hopefully you are all, um, so to say, awake uh, on, a, on a Saturday morning. Okay, good. Uh, so how many of you know about this, paperswithcode.com? Does anybody know? If you know, do a plus one. Yes, sir. Okay, Kopal. Yeah, oh, very nice. Very nice. So, so for, for people who don't know, I think the uh, paper, sorry, papers with code uh, is basically a super interesting uh, uh, way by which you can actually find. So this is connecting to the, uh, the points that I said also earlier, which is to actually make data sets public, all of that, right? Here, what they are doing is they are making with not just the data set, they're also making the code public, right? I write a paper. I, I put the, because I'm sure if, if any of you are working on machine learning, you would have realized that, oh, somebody wrote a paper to implement what they have written itself will take a lot of time. And to implement whatever they said and get the results that they got is even harder. So that's what this papers with code is trying to address, which is if you, if you uh, please, please use it uh, as per your sort of say interest topic, whatever. Uh, so this one will give you code with the paper that is published. Why this is interesting, why this is necessary, so to say. It actually helps improve the credibility, right? The credibility of the authors, right? Because many a times papers that are done, you cannot, so one of the, I mean, one of the key element of research is reproducibility. I'm sure you would have heard this word before. If you've taken any research methods class, this is thing of saying, oh, the research should be reproducible. Any research for that matter should be reproducible. So for that reproducibility, if you make your data public, if you make your code public, you're actually getting more and more credibility, right? Saying that, look, he's, he's, he's confident about his, his, his own research that he's actually giving the code and he's actually making the uh, uh, data set also public that you can run your own experiment on the code and find out whether the results are safe. That's one advantage. Second advantage, building on your work, right? So somebody, so I, uh, so for example, Kartika, when we started, showed us some data sets that are available. Data sets are there, code is also available. You can go to GitHub and get many of our projects code. So now somebody else could take it and work on it, right? We built, let's take a solution for finding phishing posts on Twitter. Somebody can take that code, somebody can take the data that we put, 
run the paper again, see the results, and then say that, look, I think we can make this model better, we can make this algorithm better, so they can actually work better and do, uh, um, work on it and make it better. If this was not possible, let's take if I did not make the data public, if I did not make the code public, I mean, they'll probably write to the authors. I'm sure many of you have experienced writing to the authors and not getting a response, writing to authors and getting a response saying that, oh, we don't have the code, we don't have the data. All right? So it, it helps people to work on it. Of course, it helps visibility also. Just imagine if uh, uh, your paper is on papers with code and people are, so for example, in this case, if you see the 2000 people who have seen this paper and they've actually started uh, uh, in, yeah, on papers, uh, papers with code.com, right? So what does this help? This helps the paper to get more and more visibility. Did that make sense? Uh, did that make sense in terms of actually making the code data and paper public? Some, some uh, feedback, please. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, let's move on. Um, okay, so, so how, many of you, how many of you already have an account on ResearchGate? Very nice. So I think ResearchGate is getting very popular. Uh, so the um, meaning my 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 recommendation for uh, research gate would be that it's it's basically a social network of people who are doing research, right? Uh, so just don't uh, meaning. Uh, so here is another um, here is another example for uh, I meaning here is another question to people who have an account. Have you ever answered a question on uh, research gate? Somebody poses a question many times. Oh, very nice, Kofa. You have shared my papers also. Super, very nice, right? So please, please be active also. That's the point I was trying to get across, which is that you should start posing questions. You should start answering questions. Um, so that's where the research gate will help you get more visibility into the uh, domain, right? People uh, who are looking at uh, that area of work, people who are working in that area will get to know, oh, there is this uh, person called Pramod. Uh, who's actually super active on ResearchGate in this topic of, um, again, so to say, something on social networks, let's say, something on privacy, something on recommendation, right? It can, it can work out so well to you, right? It can work out in, in terms of uh, uh, getting opportunities, getting postdoc positions, getting jobs. I can see it, meaning being visible, being, being active, right? And being approachable are, are probably some of the key elements of, uh, uh, doing doing good work. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Vasuki is asking. People ask for paper which is not having public access. Shall we share? Yes, I think if you if you have signed up uh, uh, any any of the so to say copyright things, please check with what copyrights have you signed. But otherwise, as a preprint, for example, I, I'll show you. I, I think there was an earlier question also which I should answer. Uh, but here is what I I we do. Uh, so all papers, right? All papers, um, all code that we write, everything is public. For example, if if we go to uh, you, you're able to see my screen, right? The the precog dot yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you go to publications, so we actually also annotate all the publications. For example, if you see. All of these papers, posters, everything is here. Uh, some places, if you see, there will be data set also. Look at this paper. It says that, oh, there is paper, there is code, there is flyer, there is slides, and there is data set. So you can actually go to all of them directly from here. Right? So I, I click from here. It will actually take me to the data set page uh, from where you can get the data. I click the code. It should go to the GitHub uh, code repository, and it will have, uh, have all the code. You can take the code and run it directly from here. Is that, uh, did that make sense, Dr. Vasuki? Yes, okay. Uh, another private question. Again, please post the question publicly so everybody also will benefit, uh, but I can, I can take this question. Uh, can you show an example how to extract code of a paper from papers.com? So same thing, um, um, whoever asked. So here is what I would do, no? I would just go to uh, uh, GitHub uh, from papers.code.com. I will just take the code and just use it. 
Whoever asked, I hope you got the answer. Okay, let's continue. Okay, uh, so GitHub, I just mentioned, right? So how many of you have GitHub account? Um, how many of you have GitHub account? Okay, there are many of them. Okay, very nice. Uh, so yeah, please use GitHub also to post or share your code, how much ever small you are. So for example, I, I can show you, uh, so let me also uh, go back and show GitHub of GitHub, right? So if you see, some of our codes are super simple. For example, look at this. This is a code that we did. Uh, so this is a summer school that we organized in 2018. And uh, the summer school was on social computing. And we actually made some of the code that we did uh, uh, used here. And, and this code is actually used by many others or many places. Interestingly, right? So our research paper codes don't get used so much while our small code, for example, I think somewhere we have a code which is also about data collection. For example, this one, this one gets actually used uh, many times. These two, these two code and data sets are actually slightly popular also. So this is uh, uh, in the English code mix POS tagging, which is if you give a text, it'll actually uh, tag the uh, text of the tweet to say that which part of it is Hindi, which part of it is English, subject, object, verb, all of that, noun, proper noun. That's the tagging that it will do for code mixed data, right? It's very, I uh, mean, get, I get a lot of requests for data sets that uh, we have actually put on this topic, right? So making data sets, making GitHub code public also derives a uh, lot more visibility and credibility to your work. Okay. okay, so that's just an example of a very popular uh, GitHub code. So let's let's uh, uh, come back to uh, presenting your work in a few minutes, uh, or, or we can just take it as a bit. Uh, so how much more time do we have? Okay, so about 18 minutes. Let's just see what else I want to talk. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, so important one, uh, as I said, mentioned before, being part of a community. I, I, I really think that PhD students and, and actually even faculty, uh, being part of a community, uh, community group, uh, network is, is super critical for whatever you're doing. And let it be your research paper, let it be the, you teaching well, uh, let it be you supporting students, all of that, being part of a group is actually extremely important. How do you find them, right? Strategies to find them is the harder part, right? You have to, you have to figure out how to get to uh, people who work on the same space. Uh, one of the critical, uh, one of the good ways of doing it is in Twitter. I will just show you how uh, uh, in Twitter, uh, how to do it or how to actually get to people who are working in the space. Uh, but one of the things that uh, we've started as part of ACM India uh, is actually get people who are working in the space, first doing PhD itself in the country together. Area Vagara, we can start doing it later also, right? Um, so so we, we started this thing called as PhD Clinic. It has a mailing list, which, uh, which is in the next slide, how to get onto the mailing list of PhD Clinic. Uh, but it already has about 350, uh, about 350 members who, who are actually doing PhD in computing. Everybody is doing PhD in computing. Um, uh, please contribute to the local uh, chapters also. I'm sure if you're a student at uh, SSN, uh, there must be an ACM chapter. There must be a, a IEEE chapter. There must be um, what do you call codes for women, right? Women for tech. All of that clubs are very active these days. Uh, please participate in all of them. Of course, uh, becoming a member is also helpful. So here is the a PhD clinic one. So what is the PhD clinic idea? PhD clinic idea is very reference to uh, the doctor visit that uh, uh, you would do otherwise. Uh, you're unwell, you go to a doctor, you, you have a problem in PhD, problem in terms of, uh, let's say literature review, you need help, let's say problem formulation, you need help, you need help with some data analysis, you need help with moving forward in your PhD, defending your PhD, all of that. That's the help that you can get to going to, uh, um, uh, going to a PhD clinic, right? Uh, so the PhD clinic, uh, um, mailing list is at the end of the slide. Uh, please take a picture again, however you want to join. Uh, please send an invitation. We can actually put you part of the mailing list itself. 
Okay. Okay. So here is here is a few other things. Uh, yeah, Kartika. I will, if I forget, please remind me. I'll talk about the paper rating section on Monday. Sure, sir. Uh, so clear public good, right? Please make all the data sets public. Uh, it's not just us. Many people do it. Uh, the one on the left is what uh, Kartika showed when you started. The one on the right is uh, uh, at Stanford, a professor at Stanford who is also uh, sharing all the data sets and code everything that he does public, and he's actually a very very popular professor. All right. Uh, so, so here is here is a uh, for people who are more more uh, sort of say looking at all of this, saying, okay, how does it help me, right? Why should I care? Right. In that sense, if you make your data set public, whatever research you do, the the chances of your paper getting cited is higher by nine percent. Okay. Take two papers, one paper with the data public and one paper without the data public. This gets nine percent citations more. Again, the research on that. Yeah, so this is the, this is the most fun part, I guess, all of you will uh, relate to, uh, which is make, uh, be part of uh, being active on social media. Uh, how many of you have Twitter account? Can you say T if you have a Twitter account? How many of you have ever interacted with another researcher on Twitter? Very nice, Dr. Dr. Kanagoli saying, no, you need courage, right? Thanks for doing that, right? I think you will, yeah, so sure. So, so I, I think it is, it, is, it is very, very necessary, meaning I, 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 for example, just take a look at this. A professor on the left, uh, he's, a, he's a professor at uh, USC, um, uh, Southern California. The professor at the right is the University of Chicago. Both are extremely uh, prolific, great academic uh, research uh, profiles that they have, right? But they also do actually a lot of these uh, talking about their research in, uh, in uh, social media. Look at the paper, look at the work on the tweet on the left. Oh, glad to see yet another paper. Of uh, the paper got New York Times uh, uh, article uh, was written on his research and he's actually saying more on our Fox project on New York Times. Here is a link to the pay, uh, research paper, here is FAQ. Just imagine, he's, I mean, if you, you go look up uh, his citations, go look up his profile, he, he's brilliant, right? He's one of those super active person on Quora also. Right? But he's sitting and doing this. Why? Because I think it is, it, is, it is helping him to project his research, but in turn, he's also helping people to learn how to do things, right? So I, I highly recommend, I, I, I become a big, big uh, fan. I'm, I'm very, very active for a... Uh, for a professor, I get criticized also. Uh, for a professor, uh, I think I'm more active than what I should be, I guess. Uh, but I'm, I'm very active on social media. For example, I will post about this particular uh, talk also on all platforms that I'm active on uh, after I'm done with the talk. So interact with others. Don't just have an account. Just, for example, if you find a paper, if you find a researcher who's relevant to your work, uh, follow, follow them. If they post something, like it, make a comment on it saying, oh, I, I read this paper, I liked it. For example, you can even connect. You know, somebody, PK, PK makes a paper public where on tweets. You like the paper or it's relevant to you. You read the paper, write a blog, uh, retweet the tweet with saying, look, I wrote a blog on your paper. Look at it. You, you are able to get access to uh, people who otherwise probably you will not get access to them in a conference. Probably, you'll, I mean, it's hard to get access to people anyways. Right? So that's, that's what I meant. Uh, so for just to give you a background about how I used social media for even building this talk like two, two and a half months back, September 14th. Um, so what I did was uh, I, I, I made a first version of this talk. And then I said that, look, I, I, I think I, I, I'm not probably the best person. I'm not uh, a fully equipped or expert in the scientific communication pro uh, idea. Let me just ask people. Right? I just did a post. I made the slides public. I, I made the... Uh, slides, uh, first version of the slides public. And I just ask questions. Do you have suggestions uh, uh, for all suggestions that I do? Of course, uh, uh, I, I will actually, I also said that I will do acknowledgements. Legitimately, if somebody gives me a suggestion, and I actually use it. I said, I'll put your name in my slides, all right? So here is what happened, amazing set of inputs. So this, this professor is a computer science professor at Brown. He gave some suggestions on how to give a talk. Just, just look at it, you, like, read the suggestions. Brilliant, right? He's, he, he's nailing it on, nailing the problem of giving a talk. Keep it short, then make it shorter. I actually use the terms that he has said in my slides later for presentation. 
question answer is far more than valuable of the talk. You can ask your audience questions like I'm asking, right? Oh, do you have an account here? Do you have an account there? Uh, have you posted? Have you reacted? Blah, blah, blah. Right? So, so such suggestions came in. And this is a student who actually made this suggestion. Here is more. Sorry. Here is more. So there is, there is a PhD student in Georgia Tech who made this comment. He's a, he's a researcher in Google who made this comment saying, oh, you should actually give this, this suggestion in the slides. Professor at Georgia Tech, again, computer science, people who are doing social media research would know her. Uh, she does a lot of depression uh, related and health, mental health on social media analysis. Again, a PhD student, right? So, so people, people are giving suggestions. You, uh, you decide how to make use of it, right? Uh, use it to your benefit. All of these people are available. You only have to figure out, uh, I mean, make the right questions, make it, make it, uh, I mean, be, be truthful, I guess, right? You, you don't want to uh, um, get inputs and quietly put it into your slides and not give uh, slide uh, suggestions. So what, not give acknowledgements. What I did was I finished the talk, first portion of the talk. I posted the talk again, and then gave acknowledgements to all of them also in, not just in the slides, I thanked them on the tweets itself. Here are the reasons why Twitter is actually big reason why all researchers should actually start using it. This is the next two, three slides, and then we can stop. I can take some questions. Engagements outside one's community. So if, you, if you're not on, uh, if you put your research on social media, there is a chance that you're going to talk to people who are not in your community. For example, not for me, not part of computer science people, which is very good, right? People who are not part of your research, if they look at it, there's always amazing set of inputs that uh, comes up. 40% of them will be non-technical, which is also very useful. Um, this research was done on ecology and uh, conservation domain, but they get people uh, from outside their research also look at uh, uh, their research. You can, so somebody even argued that you can even do a full life cycle of research, right? Which is you, you create an idea, you post it there, get some input. I understand there must be some, some of you who are worried about, oh, my idea would be taken, this intellectual property problem, all that, which can be addressed if, you, if you're smart enough. Uh, here is another research to show that using social media to promote academic research, identifying the benefits of Twitter for sharing academic research, right? Otherwise, what would happen? Pull versus push model, right? If you are interested in research, you'll go to Google Scholar, search for a paper, uh, right? You'll go do some searches in uh, ACM, IEEE, all of that. Now, just follow the right kind of people. Instead of you going pulling a paper, people are pushing the paper to you, right? If, if, uh, if you're part of a research uh, gate, there are also papers are getting pushed to you. Here again, it is shown that citations actually increase if you're actually part of the Twitter uh, network. Okay, did that make sense? Did that, did that connect? Did that make a, a sort of say strike a chord with any of you? Uh, anybody else? I see Kartika and Kanagavalli who are, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Meena, Meena, first time Meena is speaking. Okay, okay. Good, you're good. So yeah, I, I really think that uh, as, act, as, as researchers, we should get very active on social media, particularly about being, being selfish, right? I think uh, what, what is wrong in being uh, uh, selfish in terms of uh, talking about a research and uh, doing it. So I'll, 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 I'll show you uh, live about how to get to people. I think I promise that we will do that. Uh, and then I will also talk about the uh, brainstorm thing that uh, Kartika reminded. Okay, so here is, here's my Twitter account, right? So how to actually find my area of research people, right? If, if, if I were you, what should I do, right? So I, I will, let's say, start about social networks. I have not done this before, so I'm just doing it live. So let's see, right? Social networks, look at this. A starting research group first shows up. I didn't know who they are, right? Uh, INSA, there is a professional association of researchers interested in social network analysis. Right, so you should go look them up, saying that, okay, who are, who, so uh, the other ways of looking at it is also, who are the other people that I know who are following this account, right? These are the people who are, I know, who are following. Let's take, so Claudia. Claudia is a professor at the University of Michigan. I know that she does, she does brilliant work. Kiran, who's a postdoc at MIT, who's following. 
must be a good account to follow also, right? So I should follow this account. Is that, is that, is that making sense? How to find people, how to find, uh, uh, so to say, accounts to follow. Right, social network, you can do security. Security probably is very broad, so it's actually uh, harder to uh, get uh, anything that is relevant to research. But I'm sure you can actually, so for example, how would I do um, uh, security? Benzao is actually a security researcher, so you would, you would say research and machine learning, blah, blah, blah. Just go look at, uh, just go look at, actually, sorry, just go look at his followings, right? <coughs> he is following, right? He must be following people who are actually doing research in whatever, right? Uh, look at how many people are, uh, how many people he's following who are actually faculty. So now it's a good starting point. So it, it's, it's basically this uh, traversing the graph uh, with, uh, with starting point as a topic, a user, something like that. It will definitely help you to reach people who uh, you are uh, interested in connecting to. Here is, here is my acknowledgement slide I said. These are the people who gave uh, uh, acknowledgement, uh, gave inputs to my talk until then, until the first version of the talk. So I've given all credits to all of them and this, is, this slide is also public. So that they also get to know that I gave them credits and I'm also happy that, look, I, I got a lot more. Uh, meaning I, I think all these papers that I've cited in this talk would not have come if, if, if some of my students did not help me build this, uh, uh, so to say, set of papers, uh, which were making connection of social media research to actually scientific communication. Okay, good. Uh, so the last one. Um, what Kartika said. So here is, uh, this is the, uh, so, so we, do, we do paper reading sessions uh, as, as part of PhD life. I'm sure you're reading papers. Uh, you're, you're probably reading it yourself. Uh, you're probably reading it with your friends. So what we thought we'll do uh, for, for so to say, making it more exciting in that sense, uh, is actually we'll read it with paper, anybody who's interested with us, right? So we made the paper reading session. So we're gonna make one uh, a paper reading session. So this is our schedule for the month, for the semester. Every, every Monday we read a paper, right? But every month, one paper we are going to actually make it, everybody can join, which is anybody uh, in this call can actually uh, register from here and actually say that you want to attend the paper reading session. But please um, attend the paper reading session only if you have read the paper, because reading the paper is extremely important uh, to attend a paper reading session. Okay, Kartika, anything else you want me to say? Otherwise, uh, I think uh, I will. I, I can stop here. That's my uh, coordinates. Any any help? Any of you may need. Uh, please feel free to connect. I'm happy to help. Uh, students uh, in some ways uh, or the other. Okay. Uh, 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 yes, sir. I think uh, that's fine. And uh, I'm in for 26th, sir. So I need to read the paper and come uh, come for the yeah. session. Okay. Yeah. okay. You, you need to read the paper and come, right? Otherwise, you will not, you will not have anything. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, sir. So I just had a doubt whether it is like, oh, what is actually paper reading? You will teach us how to lean a, uh, read a paper or is it like uh, you will make us understand how a paper has to be written or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure. So so the way I would uh, do, the way we would do otherwise within the group also is that, so uh, one person is a lead. So let's, let's go. So I, I assume people have taken you know, whatever screenshot of the coordinates if they need, uh, but let's go back to my uh, page of this. So if you see, there is a there is a sort of say moderator, but there mm -hmm. is a person who's lead for every paper. So for for Monday, I'm the lead. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So the, for the for this person is actually to moderate the discussion, which is that I will start the discussion by saying, "Oh, here is a paper." Uh, so for example, here is how I would do. Unfortunately, it's on a different device. Uh, so I've read the paper already. This is the paper we are reading. I've read the paper already. I'll project the paper and say, "Look, these are the these are the marks. These are the points that I want to discuss." Uh, I think that this point is very good. I think that this is not clear. They should have written it differently. Uh, these, are the, these are the methods that they've used, which is very nice. Uh, so summarizing the paper on what they did and having a discussion around it. So in the process, whoever is listening will learn how to read a paper, right? So I don't have to do a deck of slides about, oh, here's how you read a paper. Otherwise, learn yeah. by doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a practical session, sort of. Okay, okay. 
Okay, okay sir. Okay, sir. So, do, you, do, you want, do you want to uh, stop the recording if it's okay? Because if you have to upload it, we can upload it only till here. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, and if if 